sailing's been really good to me. I've, uh, I think I've been doing it now for, let me do the maths, uh, 34 years uh, continually. Um, yeah. Come from a non-sailing family, which is, uh, I suppose, pretty unique in, in some ways. It's very much a passed down from the generations. But uh, my um, my mum and dad had no idea what sailing was all about. And it was my oldest brother's fault. He came home from school one day and said to my parents, I want to get a Flying 11. And obviously having very supportive parents, uh, they did that. And uh, I still remember my first experience was at my uh, grandparents' place in the Lane Cove River. The boat was tied up to the wharf and uh, my two old and meaner brothers thought it'd be really funny to throw me in the boat and uh, see what reaction I would have. Of course it half swamped, filled up with water, I ended up bawling my eyes out and uh, had any experience. And that was when I was about six years old. But sure enough, two years later, uh, when I jumped into a Manly Junior with my uh, middle brother, uh, you couldn't get me out of it. I, I just loved the sport ever since. I haven't missed a summer uh, ever since that, that fatal day back in, I think, 1980. And, uh, and, and now, um, you know, I could probably even say I haven't missed two summers a year. I've been that fortunate with the sport. You know, so I've um, started sailing in a in a in a, uh, a, a sailing club. It's very much a community sailing club uh, called Hunter Seal on the start of the Parramatta River, and uh, you know, just fell in love with it and rolled through Manly Juniors into Flying Elevens. And Flying Elevens, I think, would be probably one of the most amazing boats I've ever sailed in the sense of the feelings, the exhilarations you get from the from the ride. Uh, I still remember the couple of nail-biting times or white-knuckle times I've had in these classes, zooming along, and if I get to the bottom mark, you know, still upright, I'm, I'm pretty happy. And uh, but I progressed from that into um, into skiffs. I went to a 16-foot skiff. Then I uh, got my first international experience after that with going with the 505s, and I went to a World Championships. And I reckon that's where I first got my um, real ambition to do the Olympic Games. I know as a kid I certainly said I wanted to go to the Olympics and win a world championships and this sort of thing, but I don't think I really knew what I was saying. But the 505 was the first real experience of, well, you know, this can be a reality. This is uh, maybe it's something I can do. And from there I lost track there for a little while and went 18 foot skiff and got to the Grand Prix circuit. Got a few scars to show for it and lost a few ends of teeth here and there. Um, but uh, from there I then progressed to the 470. And it wasn't, the, I suppose it was in the late 90s in, on the eve of the uh, Sydney Olympics, you know, my hometown. And I wanted to, uh, to go in, represent my country, my, my city, my harbour. But uh, things didn't work out where, there. And, uh, but it, obviously I've had a great journey along those paths and I, I campaigned across the four Olympic Games. And I think I've almost had the full spectrum of uh, feelings that come from the Olympic Games as well. You know, I've had that obviously missing selection for the Sydney Olympics. I've had going to the Athens Olympics as, as favourites, as world number one and world champions, and failing, choking, as the Aussie, Aussies would say. Uh, but then obviously, you know, going to Beijing Olympics and, and feeling what it's like to stand on that podium and, uh, and you know, listen to your national anthem. And I guess that's probably my, my biggest highlight that I've got from a lot of the Olympic Games. You know, I've, I've, I suppose I've had different feelings from each of them. And uh, the, the Athens Olympics, my highlight was getting the green bag and getting the Aussie uniform and getting the Aussie uniform with the emblem on your, on your shoulder that was uh, on your chest was one of the most memorable things. Beijing, obviously, standing on that podium, listening to my national anthem and watching my flag go up in the middle. Not two pulse suckers either side of me. And, uh, and London was uh, obviously uh, getting the phone call from the uh, chef de mission saying would I represent the whole Olympic team and lead the whole Olympic team into the closing ceremony and carrying the, carrying the flag. And that was certainly my highlight there. So I think I've um, been very fortunate with my sport and, uh, and had some amazing experiences.